what a difference. It is empty here. The homeless encampment here uh, was cleared away two weeks ago. Now, there were so many tents here at one point in time, you couldn't even see the mural here. The 20 something tents that were here are gone, and so is much of the trouble. It's kind of refreshing, and like, I feel like I'm in a new place, you know? For many people who work and visit businesses on South Weller Street in Seattle's Little Saigon neighborhood, it's a dramatic change. It's calm, it's very really nice. We don't have customers being very hesitant anymore. The nearly two dozen tents that lined the street for the past few months are now gone. I'm happy because they're gone, you know. I don't know where they put them at. It's a lot nicer. <laughs> John Cow is the owner of King's Oriental Foods. It's directly across from where the tents were. How do you feel yeah. knowing that it's all cleaned up now? Well, it's much better. It's, it's a lot better. And now a lot of our clients will feel really safe and happy about it. Business owners like Yenvi Pham of Hello M say it took a lot to get the help they needed from the city. Even after several tent fires, shootings, and countless calls to the police, the camp was still there and growing. Through a lot of collaborative effort, uh, we had a Goodwill, um, my landlords um, coming in and, and then Friends of Los Saigon and really advocating for the public safety of the street. And I think it was a lot of kind of just weekly and daily pressure yes. for the city to be accountable. According to the mayor's office, the Hope team found 25 people camping on South Weller Street. On May 18th, seven of them moved to a homeless shelter. Days before the camp was removed, three other people moved to a shelter. The mayor's office offering this comment today, quote, it is our goal to connect everyone on site to shelter and or services prior to an encampment removal. If there are attempts to recamp in this area, those will be addressed by the unified care team. Um, several families want justice for their teenage children after four of them were shot while stopped at a red light in Tacoma last month. The man who police say is behind it all was arrested last night. Today he made his first court appearance and Como's Mo Hyder has the latest from Tacoma. I find that there is probable cause to justify a filing of the counts against you and I will therefore enter a plea of not guilty to each and every charge. Nearly two weeks later, 19-year-old A.J. Quincy Allen is behind bars after police say he pulled up next to a group of teenagers and fired at them while they were inside a vehicle during a traffic stop. The court documents say Allen is being charged with five counts of assault in the first degree. Today, the court also setting Allen's bail at $750,000. Right now, detectives don't know a motive, but say it could have been a retaliatory shooting. There are ties that the suspect has to uh, there is a gang affiliation. One of the teenagers drove the group of five to the hospital after four of them were shot. We did speak to the mother of one of the victims the day after the shooting happened. She didn't want to be seen on camera. My daughter doesn't be in the mix like that. She usually is home. So this is like, it's traumatizing to the whole family. Near that intersection where the shooting happened, employees at Smoke and Mart are relieved after hearing about the arrest. It's scary, you know. We don't want to get hit by stray bullets. We, you know, have tomorrow to live for. And say know, going forward, go it'll be extra outside. cautious. Just keeping an eye out, you know, not being afraid to check your surroundings and look around. In Tacoma, a hider, Como News. Preston, rape survivors tell me they are disheartened and frustrated. They feel like justice is still not a priority for victims, and that is unacceptable, especially after such a violating crime. The impact is exasperation. The impact is here we are again, more of the same. For Leah Griffin, the unrelenting fight for justice has always been a struggle. In 2014, she was raped in her own neighborhood. The system that I encountered was fundamentally broken. Since then, she's been on a mission to help other survivors. While on the Sexual Assault Forensic Examination Task Force, she helped pass some game-changing bills for survivors. She's now running for state representative in the 34th. My story is indicative of that. In 2014, back when the police were fully funded, I still waited for hours for somebody to take my report. I still, I had to pass a state law to make the police do the bare minimum to just test my rape kit. She's outraged after an internal Seattle Police Department memo shows the sexual assault unit is so understaffed, it stopped assigning detectives new cases with adult victims this year. Our society, our police, our systems don't care about rape. 
don't care about survivors. That is the impact of this. The unit went from 12 detectives in 2019 down to just four in February. SPD says more detectives are on the way. It's shocking as to how clueless they are. State Senator Monka Dingra says the impact is fewer referrals to prosecutors, which can kill a case, and the trauma of waiting. It is disturbing on many levels, especially because we need our law enforcement officers to be able to distinguish between crimes of property and crimes of violence. And when something as heinous as sexual assault occurs, there is simply no excuse not to prioritize these cases. She's been a senior deputy King County prosecutor for decades. She co-founded API Chaya, advocating for survivors. This 2020 King County Auditor's report on sex crimes shows victims are harmed by gaps in the justice process, especially if their cases aren't assigned to detectives or prosecuted. Senator, is this situation acceptable to you? This is absolutely not acceptable. This is the year 2022. We've had the Me Too movement. We have made promises to survivors saying we believe them. It is time for law enforcement to show up. This week, SPD Chief Adrian Diaz insisted no sex assault case is being ignored. He said while the department deals with the staggering staffing crisis, each case is now triaged. Cases are now being cross-assigned to the Domestic Violence Unit. We are working through every case. Uh, it's just taking a little bit longer for some sexual assault cases. Leah says this is a chance for police agencies to start making changes. This is a real opportunity for the city of Seattle, for Seattle PD, to take a good hard look at how they've been practicing, not just recently, but we're talking about decades. Yeah, Michelle, we are at Lincoln High School, just one of the schools where kids reportedly brought guns to campus. And today we talked to a couple of students off camera who said they're concerned that and we're surprised to hear that a couple of those cases happened here. And of course, they're concerned for their own safety going forward. We're really pushing out the if you see something, say something. Now more than ever, Tacoma police are urging students to report any suspicious behavior after arresting five teenagers since May. Among them, a 13-year-old Mason Middle School student who allegedly threatened to recreate the Uvalde, Texas shooting, but never had a gun. The student claimed they were going to shoot other students. The other arrests were for bringing guns onto their school campuses at two middle schools and a high school. Even if it's just a gun on school and no threats were made, or if someone took a gun to school um, to feel safer, like they were going to protect themselves from bullying, um, Right, not acceptable to have guns at school. Tonight, students off camera at Lincoln High School tell us they were surprised to hear the details of one of those incidents that happened at their school. The students had a school walkout and went to Lincoln Park and there was an altercation and a student pistol whipped another student. That uh, suspect actually turned himself in and was um, arrested. Of course, this comes at a time when safety is top of mind for everyone in the week since the mass shooting in Uvalde. It's obviously a grave concern for us that guns are being taken onto school campuses. And as students here in Washington have been outspoken against gun violence. Hey, hey, ho, ho, guns in schools have got to go, hey. They're among the reasons why police are urging parents to talk to their kids about reporting any suspicious behavior or threats to their teachers. Police say in most of these recent cases, students waited until they got home to tell their parents, who then called police. We want to just make sure that all of our students at our Tacoma schools are safe and know that when they report something, the Tacoma police will look into it. Hi, everyone. I'm Preston Phillips from Como News. Thanks for checking out the Como YouTube channel. You can see more of our videos right here by clicking on the video links for more news from the Seattle area and western Washington. Oh, and don't forget to click the subscribe button below so you don't miss our YouTube updates.